Just like you saw in the thumbnail, we're going to make a stylized sparkling effect with geometry nodes that you can put onto all your shiny objects. And we don't have to do a whole lot to achieve this. First, I'll bring in an object that I want to sparkle, and then I'll model one of the sparkles. I'll scatter a bunch of points onto our object and instance the sparkle onto each of those points. The bulk of the video will be showing how to get them to scale up and down individually, like in this animation. I'll show a few more ways to control it, but that's pretty much it. As always, you can download the file that I make in this video from Patreon, where you can also see my videos before they're released, get coupon codes for free products, and get files that I don't share anywhere else. I also donate a portion of the profits to environmental causes each month. Links for everything are in the description. Alright, let's get started. So here we are in Blender. I'm using version 3.2 for this one. Uh, this will also work in 3.1 if you're using that version, and it probably will work in previous versions also, but I recommend using at least version 3.1, just in case. So first thing we're going to do is add in an object that we want the sparkles to, you know, be instance onto. I'm just going to hit Shift A and add in a monkey head, and I want this to be a little smoother, so I'll hit Control 2. Um, that just adds in this subdivision surface modifier, and I'll apply that and I'll also shade this smooth. So that's all we need to do here. We can now go to Geometry Nodes Workspace up here. If you don't see it, you just wanna click this plus and it should be under General right here. So just click that. And now that we're in here, make sure that Suzanne is selected and click this plus to add a new Geometry Node tree. That also adds in this modifier right there. Let's make a little room. So first what we're gonna do in here is model our sparkle. And that we're actually going to use geometry nodes for because the shape is pretty simple. We're just going to start with a cube. So shift A, S to search, and search for cube right here. Now if you're using the node wrangler, you can preview this node with alt, shift, and left click like that. So now we can see our cube. And I want to extrude this. I want to extrude each face. So I can add a, an extrude mesh node right here. And you want to make sure that individual is checked so that each face is extruding separately. Otherwise, it's just going to be a bigger cube. Now, I want this to be quite a bit smaller, so I'll change this to 0 0.01 like that. We can change the offset scale to 0.1. And to make this smoother, we can add a subdivision surface node right here. And that's going to smooth it out quite a bit. You can turn the level up if you want it to be even smoother, but it's okay for this to be low poly um, because these sparkles aren't going to be very big. And if you plan on putting a material on here that's going to have like specular reflections and you want this to be smooth, you can also add a set shade smooth node right here and it will smooth it out for you. So this is it for our sparkle shape. That's all we're going to use. So let's just drag this down here to make some room and we can plug our geometry, our original geometry back in like that. Now I want to distribute a bunch of points onto this head right here. So I can add a distribute points on faces node and plug that in right here. I want this to be joined with the original geometry because if we plug this in, it's going to replace it. So bring in a join geometry node right here and we can add the points in. That way we're seeing both like that. So onto each of these points, uh, we want to instance one of our sparkles that we made. So we can use a, an instance on points node right here. And we can just plug this in. So now we have a whole bunch of points right here. If it bothers you that any of these are intersecting, we can just change this from random to Poisson disk. And you just want to turn the distance minimum up to maybe something like 0.2, something like that. And now when we turn this up, even higher, I'll turn it up to 250. Um, you can see that none of them get too close to each other. You can space them out even more by just turning this number up. Now, one thing about this that I don't like is how they're kind of clipping into the head. I want them to be spaced out a little more. So there are a few ways of doing this. I think the easiest way is probably just with an extrude mesh node right here. We can just drop that in. You just wanna make sure that individual is not checked this time. So this will basically just push it outward. If we preview this with Alt, Shift, and left click, once again, that's a node wrangler thing. You can see this is what's actually happening to it. And then it's distributing a bunch of points onto it like that. You can get a set position node right here. And we want to offset it by the normal. So we can grab the normal right here, plug that into the offset. 
And to be able to scale this up and down, we can add a vector math node and set that to scale. So when we have this set to zero, it's going to you know, be its original size. But as we turn this up, we're going to get a similar effect to what's happening with our extrude mesh node like that. If you have an object or if you're using this on a collection or something and it has like inside spots, areas on the inside and you're getting, you know, things instanced in there and you don't want that to happen before this put either a convex hull like this and that will kind of wrap, uh, you know, around it like that. Or you could use a bounding box, which is just going to put a box around it that's like the same size as your object. So now that we know how to do that, we can just set this however far away from it we want, like that. So now I want to scale each of these up and down. So to get that started, we'll bring in a scale instances node right here. All of these are instances right now, all of the sparkles. So this one should work fine. You can see we can scale it up and down. Now I want to scale each of these up uh, individually so that you only see one at a time. And the node that makes all of this possible is the index node. So let's bring in the index node right here. And to explain what this does, I'm just going to bring in a, a mesh line right here and I'll plug it in. So we're using that instead of Suzanne. So basically what the index is doing in this situation is it's going to count um, each point in our line right here. You can see we have this set to 10 and you can also see how many instances we have over here. It says 10 and it's going to count them and give each of them a number. So the first one will have a value of zero, then we'll have one, two, three, four, and it'll just keep counting up like that, whole numbers, integers. So that's what our index is outputting. And we can see this in action by just plugging this into the scale right here. And you can see that's what it's doing. The first one is getting scaled down to zero, so you can't see it. This has a scale of one, two, three, four, five, and it'll just keep getting bigger and bigger because it's matching the index value like that. Um, and that will do the same thing with all of these points right here. So we'll just plug all the points back in like that. And this is getting way too big because right now we have 216 instances, so that's being scaled up quite a bit. So I want these to only be able to scale up to one, um, and we can do that with a math node. In this case, we're going to be using a modulo right here. We can just plug that in, and I'll have that set to one. Basically what the modulo does is it's dividing whatever you plug into the first value by the second value right here. So it's taking each index number, each value, and dividing it by one, and then outputting the, the remainder. Because these are all whole numbers, there is no remainder for any of these, so they're all scaled down to zero. But if we add another node before it and set it to add, I'll turn it down to zero for now. We can start turning this up slowly. You'll see what happens is they'll all scale up, and when it gets to one, it'll restart back at zero, and it'll just keep doing this over and over again, like that. So we can automate this motion with a scene time node. So I'll just add in scene time right there and just plug the seconds in like that and press play. And this is going to give us like the number of seconds that are passing. Let's bring in a timeline just so we can, you know, see things moving. I'll turn this up a little higher. So as time goes by, these will all scale up to one and then go back down to zero. The modulo uh, will always make it repeat basically. If we want this to go faster or slower, we can just divide the seconds. So I'll just duplicate this and change it to divide. Now, if we want this to go slower, we can just turn this up and it will go slower like that. Um, faster, you just do a decimal value. So this is going twice as fast now, but I'll just leave this set to one for now. Now I want all of these to scale up at different times. So to do that, we need to find the maximum index value. Uh, and we can do that with a node called the uh, attribute statistic node. It's this first one right here. If you're searching, we can change this to instance because we're counting the instances right here. Plug this into the geometry and plug the index into the attribute. So now we have access to all of this information right here, you know, like the minimum index value, the maximum index value, stuff like that. So to make these start scaling up at different times, what we need to do is put a division node right here. So I'll duplicate this like that. Now, when we have this set to one, all of them will start at the same time. If we set this to two, 
half of them will start with a scale of 0, and the other half will start with a scale of uh, 0.5, like that. So you can see some of them are scaling up at different times. We set this to 4, now they'll all be like a quarter second apart. So to make all of them start scaling at a different time, we need to just plug the maximum into here, like that. Now when we press play, it's quite a bit sparkly, but I don't like how we can see all of them at the same time. So to change that, we can bring in a map range node. And basically what this is going to let us do is change like if there's any pausing uh, at the beginning or end of its like scaling cycle. So if we turn the from max down like this, you can see that they scale up and they kind of hold at, uh, at a scale of one for a little longer. To make it so that there is only one scaling at any time, um, we can just add another divide node right here and use the maximum, plug that into the second slot, and turn the first value to one right there. So this is what we're going to be using for our from max, like that. Now this is going to flicker really fast, so we can uh, you know turn this division node up like quite a bit to make it slower, like that. So a problem we're having now is that they start at zero and they end at one, and then they repeat. What I want is for it to start at zero, scale up to one, and then scale back down. So to do that, we can add a float curve right here, and we can just draw in the shape that we want. So click to add a point. You can hold control to snap to a grid. I want this to be at the very top and in the middle, and then we can drag this one back down to zero. And you can see all of them will disappear now. If we hit play, you can see now that only one is appearing at any time, like that. So this is basically just changing, you know, what the scale is when it starts and when it ends. So it's starting and ending at zero, and in the middle, it's scaling up to, to one, like that. Now, if you want more than one sparkle to be appearing at, uh, you know, at once, all you have to do is change the value that we're plugging into our map range right here. So right now, only one is appearing at any time. We have this set to one. We could change this to like three. So now there should be three um, at all times visible. We can turn this up to pretty much like whatever we want, turn it up to 10, something like that. So a thing that happens is the higher you make this number, the slower they'll scale up and down. So I want this to stay consistent, and we can do that by just multiplying whatever value we have here to our seconds. So let's move this down here, add a multiply node in like that, and we'll set this to multiply. Now I want these to have the same number, so I'll add in a value node, and I'll just put 5 in here, and I'll plug that into both of these, like that. Now when I change this value, they should be scaling up and down, you know, at the same speed, like that. Or I could set it to like 5, and they're not really moving, they're not really scaling any faster, like that. Now if we go back to frame 1, You'll see a slight problem if we, you know, set it so that only one sparkle is visible. We'll actually be able to see two sparkles when it starts and when it ends. So if that bothers you and you don't want that to happen, all we have to do is add um, one to this maximum value right here. So we can just duplicate this, change this to add, and make sure that it's adding one, and that will solve that problem. One thing that I want to do is just add some materials, some quick materials. So to do that, at the very end right here, we can add a set material node right there. But we didn't make any materials yet, so, so let's just select our head right here, go over to the materials tab like that, and click new. So this will be our uh, material for Suzanne. Let's just go into look dev mode right here. I'm going to turn this to like a gold color like that. And I'll turn the metallic all the way up, and I'll turn the roughness down to make it pretty shiny, like that. Now back up at the top, let's add a second one, and this will be our sparkle. And instead of this using a principled shader right here, I'm going to click this and change it to emission. And I'll just turn this up to something like 5, something like that. Now I want to add this to the sparkle, so we can just you know, put that in the set material right there. So now we have two different materials for, you know, our head and for the sparkles like that. And if you're using Eevee, we also have Bloom. You can see that they're, they're glowing a little more. 
Let's just turn this up a little higher. I think uh, having some bloom with this makes it look pretty good, especially if you're going for a stylized look like that. And let's look back at all of the controls we have. So with this one right here, we can make these scale like further away from our object if you want this to not be too close. Um, this is how far apart the particles will be spaced like that. Um, you can also change this density factor if you want there to just be fewer overall. You can change the speed with this value right here. So if you want it to go faster, you can just make this lower, I'll set it to 20. Now it's sparkling way too fast. And we have the material right there. And I guess if you wanted these to scale up or down, um, you can just change the scale value right here if you want them to be bigger or smaller or whatever. If you're confused about what I'm doing with the index right here and want a more in-depth video about it, let me know because this could be used for a lot of different things and I could probably fill a whole video just talking about how it works. So yeah, that's the effect. Um, you know, try putting it on some other objects, see how it looks in your scene. All right, that's it for this one. Once again, you can get all the project files from Patreon. I'd like to thank my patrons for their support, and I'd like to thank you for watching. Have a good one.